Hello Finksters. Today we're taking a look at a topic that often causes confusion. The questions usually take the form, how do I create or read or update a config file with Python? And the topics we'll cover to answer these questions include what config files are and why and where we could use them. We'll touch briefly on the Python model designed for exactly this use and discuss the structure of a config file. Then we'll design and code up a program to create our first config file and then create another program to extract data from that config file and check that the correct data has transferred. And then finally, we'll discuss a couple of methods to create your config file with new information. So let's take a look at what they are and where and why we might use them. Config is a shorthand method to refer to configuration files. At their simplest, they're a file that contains data in a format that allows other programs to retrieve that data for us. They were primarily used by computer operating systems to customize the computing environment for users, but they also allow programmers a way to have common data or data that may change regularly, like IP addresses, passwords, port numbers, and host names, to centralize that data where they can be changed once instead of entering all the programs that use it to find and change all the places they use. They're also useful for a level of security. For instance, if you write some code you wish to share on your Git repository, you can put all the sensitive information into a config file and add that file to your Git ignore list, which prevents others accessing your sensitive data. So for this article, we'll focus on any files, short for initialization files. And these were extensively used by Microsoft back in the day. MS-DOS always had a config.ini file. And there's a Python module called config parser that we'll use to create this file. And once we've created the file, it will consist of sections with key value pairs underneath, which allows programmers to request data by section and key name. Let me draw that for you. So in the config.ini, you'll start with a section, and that's a square bracket notation. And we might call a section, or oh, let's call it user info. Let's say we want to put all our login information into a website into that section. And underneath that section, there will be uh, login, and we'll write the value of our login name. And there will be a password, which will contain my password for getting into whatever website we're talking about, and so on and so forth. So we can repeat this as many times as we like. We can have another section down here, which is IP addresses. And then underneath, obviously, we could have all the names and the values that relate to the IP address section. So just reminding you again, section, values, and keys, or names and anyone who's used to the python dictionary structure will not be surprised by this okay so let's just go across to the design that we want to actually use for our program so i'll just go back to our screen here and this is the file structure we're going to create our first config file. So I plan to call it configfile.ini, and inside it there will be, as you can see, two sections. One is the PostgreSQL, because I plan to use this to do a database um, connection. 
So we'll call it PostgreSQL, and underneath we'll have the names host, user, password, and database, and on the other side, the actual values of those. So there's my username, there's my password, and so on. And we'll have another one beneath, another section, user info. So this is how the development of our file should look when it's complete. Yeah? So let's go and do some coding now and see if we can create that. So I've written the code in here on how to build a any file. And of course, we start by importing config parser, the Python module. And something to note here is that's all lowercase, but when you come to actually create the object that's going to do all the work, it's lowercase for config parser, and then uppercase C and uppercase P for the actual function. Having created the object, we now want to build the structure for the file we're about to create. And that's the structure we just saw on that slide. So we're going to do config, add section, PostgreSQL, and then you can see we're going to set a whole lot of name and value issues underneath there. User, Finkster1, port 5543, password, my Finkster password. And then we'll create another section, the user info section that we saw previously. And once again, we'll create the name and values under that section. Having built the structure, we now simply have to write that structure to the new file. And that's just a very simple command with open raw file or raw string. See Python tutorials config file.ini, w for write as config file, and then the actual write command itself. So before we go and do that, I'd like to just go across to that directory just so you can see the folder is empty. Python C, Python Tutorials, there's nothing there. So let's head back to this and execute it. And there we are, the execution is finished. So if we now go back to Python Tutorials, there we have the config file.ini that's in the folder. And if I go and open that, there you can see the structure that we asked config parser to create for us. So we have the section, we have the names, we have the values. So that's worked very well. So there's our first config file. Now let's go and see how we might use that. So we'll go back to our coding. And I just want to show you first, if we didn't use a config file, what it might look like. So let's imagine I'm going to create a database connection and you don't need to know anything about databases for this because you will see the difference, but I'm going to import SQL Alchemy and then I'm going to hard code in user, username, password, password up here before then creating the engine for connecting to the database. And, and it has a very specific syntax where it wants the user password at host port slash database. So it will pull all of these figures from here, put them into there, create that connection device and create the connection to the database. But look at this, there it is all out in the open for people to see. Not only that, if you have multiple codings through a program or multiple programs using these particular bits of information, wouldn't it be dreadful if we wanted to change our password? So let's just go across to a bit of code that now will do exactly the same thing, but we'll use our config file that we just created. So a little bit more code here, but as you can see, all this down here is the same. All this down here is the same. And there's all the same things that need to be passed into this syntax here. But now, instead of hard coding, what we've done is we've imported config parser. We've created the same object that we did 
when we did the initial build of the any file, but this time we use that object to read that config file.ini, which is in the Python tutorials directory that we've just created. So it goes and reads that. It then goes and takes PostgreSQL section and passes it to that variable there, db param, database parameters, and it takes the user info section and passes it to use info. Now when we come down to user, instead of having to hard code user here, all we give it is db param user and it should return that user value that is in the config any similarly for all of these others as we come down here so let's run this but before i do that i'm going to comment out this because i don't wish to create a database connection And I'm going to bring up some print commands that I created, which will allow us to test this to see that it's actually working. And I'll uncomment those. Now let's run this. And what this file should do is go and have a look in our config file.ini. And we should print out all of the data that that is retrieved from that file. So there we have it. Down the bottom here, user variable Fingster1, my Fingster password, localhost 5543, and Postgres for the database variable. So it successfully extracted that information and has passed it into this document. So it's admittedly a bit more code in the second example, but look at the benefits you get. You don't get to hard code sensitive data, such as if we did in this particular file, there's all the sensitive data hard code. In this one, it's nowhere to be seen. And no matter how many times you use the parameters throughout your code, if you need to change their values, you simply edit the config file. And if you wish to post your code to a repository, then you can place your config file in the gitignore file and others can't see it. So, Let's just go back to editing this or updating this file now, because there are things we might want to actually change. So let's go to an update here. Now, you can update through config parser. But before we do that, let's just go and do a manual update. And I want to show you, if I open config file.ini, Let's just hand change this. This is in Notepad, so it's very simple. Let's change user Finkster1 to user Finkster67892. And we'll save that. And we'll close it. And let's go back to our file here. And you can see that we had Finkster1 there originally. Let's run this again. And there you now see Finkster 67892. So you can manually change your any files using Notepad or a word processor. But as I showed you just now, you can also change it using config parser. So what we've done here is we've once again imported config parser. We've created the object. This time the object is going to read config file.ini. It will pass whichever section we wish to amend to a variable and then in this file I'm this uh, code I'm assuming I'm wanting to change the password so you saw before that the password was my Finkster password I want to change that to Finkster coders rock and then we just have a write command as we did previously so let's run this and then we'll check out our any file to see if the changes have been affected. So there we are, it's been done. Why don't we just go back to our SQL query and run that and let's see what has happened. And there you see the password variable has now changed to Finkster coders rock. 
So as you can see, that's a very simple way of changing data in one place that may be used in multiple places. So you can change it manually, or you can change it through your whichever program you wish to use using Config Parser. So just to summarize, we've discussed config files, we've talked about what they are and why they are used. We've introduced the config parser module and we wrote a script to create a new ini file. We compared the hard coded values in one script to another which accessed values from our config file. And then finally, we amended the config file manually, and we also used the config parser module to do so. So I hope that's been helpful to you. I hope that's answered some of the questions at the beginning that we had, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.